Hi, my name is Margaret Grunkibben. I'm the chaplain of the U.S. House of Representatives. I had an opportunity to serve in the Navy and the Marine Corps for just about 35 years. There's an interesting thing about being a chaplain in as much as we are providing for our own and facilitating for others and care for all and advisement. And part of what USIP has done for me and part of my growth as a military chaplain was to understand the role that military chaplains have in advisement, in international relations, in diplomacy, and in combat op operations. So when chaplains deploy, they have several responsibilities. One is obviously, and their primary is to their people. That's the primary reason why chaplains go into combat, is to make sure that their people who are dealing with a great deal of, of, of issues, a number of issues, both in terms of serving in combat, loss, and, and uh, distance from their family members. That's our primary responsibility. But to have the opportunity to engage with the host nation, with uh, other national in individuals who are participating in that, envi in that environment, the role chaplains play really creates a connection to religious leaders who are very much a part of international affairs. Uh, we don't often realize how much religion plays across the world. About 90% of the world calls itself religion, religious, and military chaplains help to bring that into the conversation. And more than just bring it into the conversation, to, but to create some translation and to build some bridges. So with respect to peace building, if you want a country to discover peace, it often starts uh, in the community. And if a community tends to be religious, then why wouldn't you want to engage with religious leaders? What I have experienced when I've deployed, and especially in Muslim countries, uh, but almost surprisingly in mus Muslim countries, is the first thing that they recognize is that I'm clergy. Much of the world does not think America takes faith seriously. And they don't think that they take faith or religion into account when it comes to peace building or engagement with other people across the country, across the world. And so to recognize that they actually have faith leaders in military service is a surprise, or at least a welcome surprise, uh, a welcome engagement that, mil that host nations can have at a different level, particularly as it is trying to build its own nation toward peace. As a chaplain, brand new to military service, your responsibility should be first and foremost, and almost primarily, to your pastoral role. That's why you're there. But the more you, and I don't want to use the word mature in a pejorative sense, but, but the more you have a, the more mature awareness you have of the environment, the institution in which you're serving, the better understanding you have to see where religion plays a role in advisement. Whether it's internally, you know, and what the morale and the morals of your people are, or externally, I see this would have this ramification or this impact or be perceived in this regard. But that's a role that one has to take time to learn, to, to look for good mentors within military uh, service, both, command, both uh, line officers as well as chaplains. And it behooves the chaplain corps to continue to educate their chaplains in terms of this, this emerging role, emerging in the sense of, of from the individual chaplain emerging into this re uh, realm that isn't necessarily um, obvious when one joins uh, military service as a military chaplain. Mm -hmm.